Okay, hi everybody, my name is Jeff Cardell. I'm a professor at McGill University. And what I wanna talk with you about today is a project that we uh, have been undergoing for undertaking for the last uh, year or so uh, on Bayesian updating of land cover classifications in Google Earth Engine. So I'm more of a user of remote sensing, of classified remote sensing data than a remote sensor myself. And so this is actually an outgrowth of a project that I was working on a couple of years ago where we wanted to understand uh, where is, where, uh, what's the coverage of water within the northern part of Quebec? So I'll show you a little bit of that at the very end. The problem for us here is that land cover classification through time is difficult. And that it's, you know, it's tricky to merge information from different dates and sensors. We have different brightnesses on different days. As we've heard many times today, there are lots of clouds in many of our images. And you can see here in a series of pictures at the top, uh, this is from the summer of 2013 when there were several large fires, uh, large wildfires in northern Quebec. We can see it starting in the first picture there on the very left. Then in the uh, second image, that's from two different paths with a strip down the middle. Uh, the third shows a pretty decent image. The fourth uh, was good on the, on the west side, but uh, very cloudy on the east side. And our idea here is that because we can see it with our eyes, that we should be able to trace this land cover through time and in effect uh, scratch out the clouds, not by doing atmospheric correction, although atmospheric correction will be helpful for producing what I'll show you, uh, but actually by thinking of it as in the same way that when we watch a movie, you can have little bits of parts of the frame drop out and we can still see the movie. We want to be able to do the same thing. So as I say, the phenomenon uh, that are of interest should be permanently or persistently visible, even through noise. And that's the goal of what we want to produce, something like time lapse, but with categories. So categories that are, uh, that are specifiable by the users, uh, users like myself. So the idea here is that we produce rough classifications. You can see two of those images in the image sequence shown there on the very left. Uh, we do a rough land cover classification in Earth Engine. Uh, these were classifications done with just a very minimum number of points, maybe 10 or 15 points for each of three classes. The classes are uh, forest in green, uh, water in blue, and uh, recently burned areas shown in red. You can see there are lots of errors of commission, uh, commission of saying too much burn in the second picture. But on the whole, if you zoom in, you actually do have a decent representation of this very rapidly changing border uh, that happened during that time. We produce what is uh, more or less a contingency table, or like a truth table, as though the, the image on the top were perfect, and we are, want to understand how we do in the image uh, on the bottom. We run that through some very simple math, and then track for each of the categories that we're interested in, uh, the probability at each time step uh, of, this, uh, of this sequence uh, for all of the classes. So you can see uh, here a pretty well-developed example from a 40-year time series that we have uh, produced for the Roosevelt River uh, in Brazil. If any of you have read this River of Doubt book that's shown in the upper right, it's a tremendous book about uh, Teddy Roosevelt after he, was, uh, after he lost the presidency, uh, going down this river that no one really believed existed. Uh, and then it later on, uh, more or less killed him a couple of times during the, during the trip. And the river was ultimately named after him. It was extremely difficult area to ever access. But you can see over the last 40 years, it has been, uh, um, has been transformed quite a bit. So I'll pick up the movie here in a second or two and mention that here in this first uh, panel is where we have the individual images. So we have corona imagery. This is all taken from Glovis, all freely available imagery. Uh, we have corona imagery, which is at four meters, Landsat 1, 2, 3, and 4, including from like the first month after Landsat 1 was launched. We have some uh, photographs taken out the window of the space shuttle at 540 meter. Uh, resolution, some Aster data, Landsat 5, and then things that we're probably in this room more familiar with. Uh, the Siebers uh, satellite at 20 meters, but then also Landsat 7 and Landsat 8. What I want you to be able to see is that the imagery really varies a lot in quality, and it would be difficult for us to uh, develop any index among all of these images that would allow us to understand if, uh, if a pixel had changed. Instead, what we do is produce this rough daily classification that you can see in the second panel. 
including the scan lines that drop out, including the clouds where they exist. We know that they're roughly good classifications, but that they're not perfect. And of course, none of our classifications that we make, even with tremendous effort, are perfect. What you see on the right is this changing, uh, gradually changing, uh, land cover time series. And this holds all of the information that comes from each image, uh, plus the compilation of the information coming from all of the previous images. So here at each time step, you can see uh, including some areas that were deforested and then later became reforested to then finally become deforested again. Uh, in, in this area. So overall, we're coping with clouds, not trying to find cloud-free images, but instead trying to uh, sort of drown out the clouds with enough imagery. Uh, with haze, there are lots of images that have partial coverage, as you can see. Uh, and we have data of all different resolutions as well. <clears throat> So we are, uh, in addition uh, to the, the base algorithm, we're producing this in Earth Engine. We have uh, the, the basic code is now running in Earth Engine within the playground. Our goal now is to produce uh, uh, an AppSpot interface to that, with the idea being that any user uh, who's interested in tracing land cover through time would be able to come to this site, uh, perhaps introduce uh, or you know, load in a uh, set of imagery, or sorry, a land cover classification that's good, that sort of has the categories that you want, and then roll it forward in time, or perhaps roll it backward in time. So there are links here. If we have links ultimately to these talks, you'll be able to see there, there are links to uh, each of these things running. Uh, the two pictures there shown on the right uh, show that uh, for each pixel we trace, they each have an independent history in effect. So you can see uh, the top one burned uh, in day six. It was recognized, it was first seen in uh, day seven. Then by day eight, we had very reliable uh, classifications in, for that particular pixel in that area. Perfect. So uh, as a bonus, I'll just mention that I'm very interested in uh, seeing carbon content across uh, all of the lakes of northern Quebec, and that's what this uh, came out of. It can be run forwards and backwards, as I mentioned, and we think that this can be extended more generally than just these few classes, which is obvious, uh, but also that uh, we are going to work with unsupervised classifications, and really, for me, that would be the holy grail, to not have to do the individual classification. <laughs> That's maybe outside the scope of a 10 second answer, but uh, the finest resolution I think is four meters, maybe five meters, something like that. But in concept, we can run it with one meter resolution with some pixels that are very large in their information, but have many, many pixels all of the same value inside. So there's no limit to the concept of the resolution that can be run. It's not at all limited to the 30 meters of Landsat or the 20 meters that comes in Sentinel.